What's up, Praise Youth? Thank you, Braylon. Everybody say, what's up, Braylon? Great job, Braylon. Hey, how's everybody feeling tonight? Listen, it's 2022 and we're back. Who thinks they had the best Christmas out of all the people? Whoa. Who got hit in the face with a Roman candle like me for New Year's? No one. Just don't look straight into them. Anyways, yes. Hey, it's so good to be here. We missed you guys so much. We were, only, we were only gone from Praise Youth for a few weeks, but it feels like it was a really long time. So it's great to see you. Everybody just turn to your neighbor and just tell them how much you missed them really quick. Just tell them how much you missed them. Wow, look at all, look at all the love going around. Now tell the other person how much you missed them, the one you didn't turn to the first time. All right, now praise youth. Now everyone look at me and just pay attention the whole service, and that's how you can show me how much you missed me. Oof, how about that? Thanks, bro. I miss you too. So, hey, <laughs> love y'all. Love y'all. I believe in you. So, tonight we're beginning a new series in Praise Youth, and we are beginning a series on something that is kind of like the secret sauce to following Jesus. And it is something called prayer. Everybody say prayer. prayer. Like prayer is interesting because it's one of those things that we know a lot about or you hear about a lot, but maybe you don't really pray a lot. So we'll learn about that. And it's like one of those things where it's one of the answers to like everything, you know, like in church, there's like three or four answers that are always right. Like pray, read the Bible, go to church, and Jesus are always the right answer, right? So we're going to do a series all about prayer but before we do that, I need to settle something. How many of you, this emoji right here, which, what is this emoji? Is it praying hands or is it a high five? <laughs> the hard thing is Google says it's both. So, But for this series, we're going to say that those are praying hands. See, the sleeves are the same color. So it's the same person. They're praying. So... We'll go with that. So that was just a quick little survey to see what that emoji was, because I was kind of confused. Sometimes people use it as a high five. Sometimes as prayer. It's interesting. So tonight we're learning about prayer. So if you have your journals, can you just show me your journals really quick? It's 2022, but we still love taking notes. We still love journals. If you don't have a journal, you should get one. Help your neighbor take notes. We remember stuff way better when we take notes. And then we can talk about it in small groups better. Whew. So good. So if you're taking notes, you can write this at the top of your note. This is the title of this message. It's called Prayer 101. I know y'all are just starting school back. This is how we're going to do. Prayer 101. Just a little intro to prayer. Because like I said, prayer is something that we might have heard about a lot. Maybe you think that prayer is just for like pastors and people on stage to do. Maybe you think prayer is just for your small group leaders or your parents or like people that are old in church, but I want you to know, praise you, that prayer is for everyone that's a follower of Jesus, and so we are going to call tonight Prayer 101, because I think, I know for me growing up, you have a lot of thoughts about prayer, it's kind of like, a, like, what is prayer, it's like this huge word, what does it actually mean, and I know some of you might be like me growing up, I thought prayer was just something you do before you eat dinner to make sure you didn't get food poisoning, like, if you don't pray, you might choke on, like, your rice or something, so you just pray before every meal. You know, prayer is something that only pastors do, only small group leaders do, or adults do. Maybe you think prayer is only something that we do on Wednesday nights. Maybe you think prayer is something we only do on Sunday nights. Maybe you think prayer is something you do whenever you're, like, in trouble or whenever, you're like, you're out of other options. Like, how many of you, like me, have been in a math class and you're like, Lord, just please, Lord, please help me on this math test that I forgot about until 10 minutes ago, right? That was basically my whole school career, and I graduated, so praise God. Amen. So, there's all these ideas about what prayer is, but tonight we're going to talk about what prayer really is, and I want you to write this down. Just write it in your journal, what is prayer? And this is the definition I want you to write down. Prayer is talking with God. It's super simple. But the thing about prayer is that it's so simple that anyone can understand it, but it's like also, it's just so crazy to actually comprehend it 
and implement it and put it in your life. So what is prayer? Prayer is talking with God. I think it's awesome that it says, as you're writing it down, it says prayer is talking with God. It doesn't say, it does not say prayer is talking to God. It's not just talking to God. So prayer is talking to God, and then God talking to you. It's like a conversation. How many of you know, like I'm married. Lindsay likes to have two-way conversations with me, right? Like maybe your parents like to have these kind of conversations with you when you come home from school and ask how school goes. They don't want to just talk to you. They want you to, like, they talk, and then you talk, and then, like, back and forth. You know what I'm saying? So prayer is talking with God. It's not just us talking to God, trying to make him like a genie in a bottle. Be like, ooh, God, for Christmas, can I please just have a hoverboard? Can I please just have like a four-wheeler or something? That's not what prayer is. It's not just asking for God to give us stuff. It's us talking with God. Because how many of you know God wants to have a personal relationship with each and every one of us? And I know that you all have friends and you have best friends, and you talk to all those people, I hope. And in the same way, God wants to be your friend, he wants to be your Lord, and he wants to talk with you. And so it's like we get to talk back and forth in a personal conversation with God. Because at the end of the day, prayer is talking with God. It's just spending time with God. And I love that everything we do here at Praise Church, everything we do here at Praise Youth is because of Jesus, right? Because of Jesus we are? Oh, come on. First one of 2022. Because of Jesus we are? There we go. That's the gusto I needed. Okay, now we're ready. So everything we do is because of Jesus, and I love that. It's so easy to look in the Bible, the Word of God. It's so easy to look at the life of Jesus and just look how he lived his life. And it's so easy to find times when he was praying. And so we can be inspired by Jesus. We can be led by Jesus because he's our example in everything, and he's especially our example in prayer. So I just want to give you a few examples of times when Jesus was praying. So in, first off, in Luke chapter 6, talking about Jesus, it says, At this time that he, Jesus, went off to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. Can you imagine that, praying for a whole night? I would fall asleep probably. But Jesus was all about prayer. Jesus loved prayer. He valued prayer. He made time for prayer. And on this occasion, he went off. And he spent the whole night in prayer. So we see Jesus praying at night. And then in Mark chapter 1, we see another example of Jesus praying. It says, in the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded pray place and was praying there. So I love it. We have these two examples really quickly. And it shows us that. Jesus was praying all the time, whether it's morning, whether it's night, Jesus would stay up all night praying. He would get up early in the morning to pray because Jesus knew the importance of prayer. And so that's why I think it's so good that we can talk about prayer because how many of you know if Jesus needs to pray, I need to pray, right? If Jesus needs to pray, you need to pray. I've known a lot of people in my life, praise youth, I've known a lot of people that love Jesus a ton and that I want to be like one day. And I've talked to them about Jesus, about their relationship with Jesus. And probably the one thing I've never heard anyone say is I'm like, hey, man, it's so good to see you. Like, how's your relationship with Jesus? Like, how's your walk with God going? No one's ever going to say, man, you know what? I think I've just been praying too much. I think, like, God's getting tired of me talking to him. Like, I really got to dial back this prayer thing. I think I'm praying too much. Like, no one's ever going to say that. And I love that Jesus sets the example. We find him praying all the time. And if Jesus needs to pray, I definitely need to pray. And we have another example of when Jesus was praying. And I love this example because Jesus is, once again, finding time to pray. And in Luke chapter 11, it says this. One day, once again, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished praying, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. And I love that his disciples, they lived with Jesus. They went everywhere with Jesus. They were with him all the time while Jesus was um, on this earth in his ministry, telling people about who he was, that he had come to save them from their sins, that he was the Messiah they were waiting for. And he's praying once again, and his disciples are watching him pray like they probably did all the time because they were with him 
all the time, and he finishes praying, and these guys have been watching him, and they're like, bro, can you teach us how to do that? Like, I want to be able to do that. I want to know how to pray like you. And I think it's so cool because if you think about it, these disciples are with Jesus all the time. They're living with Jesus like they're traveling around, telling people about who he is. Jesus is performing miracles. He's healing people. People that couldn't walk are walking. People that couldn't see can see once Jesus heals them. He's casting out demons. He's feeding thousands of people with just a few pieces of bread. He's changing people's lives. He's going into places that no one thought he would go to talk to people that no one thought he would talk to and to change their lives forever. He's doing all of these things. He's preaching the best sermons like of all time, like the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is like the best preacher of all time. They hear the best messages. They see miracles. They see healings. They see miracle after miracle after miracle. And never once that I'm aware of, they don't ever stop him and say, hey, can you teach us how to preach? They say, Jesus, can you teach us how to pray? Jesus, we see that you make time for prayer. And we see that you are connected with God all the time. We see how much time you spend talking to God. And we see the things that you're doing. And we know that your power is coming from God. And you are spending so much time with God. So we want to know how to do that because we want to be like you. We're following you. And so they ask him, Jesus, can you teach us? how to pray. So tonight we're going to talk about two things that prayer is. As we begin this series on prayer, we're going to talk about two things really quickly that prayer is. Just to get you thinking about prayer throughout your day, hopefully you think about prayer tomorrow in school. I hope that as you go through stuff, you'll be like, man, Jesus can pray, I can pray. And so in your journals, your notes, the first thing that prayer is, Prayer is a privilege. It's coming on the screen so you can spell it. I know it's kind of a hard word. Prayer is a privilege. And a privilege is something like you're grateful to be able to do. And we get to pray. Like I love that we don't, we don't have to pray. Like coming to church, it's not like some of you might be sitting there like, oh man, I, can't, I don't want to go to small group. I know my small group leader is probably going to ask me to pray. And I'll just like talk in front of other people. I have to, like, say the right words. Like, I hope no one asks me to pray ever. Like, we don't have to pray. We get to pray. Because if you think about it, God wants to have a personal relationship with you. And he's the one that created everything that we know. He created the heavens and the earth and the animals and the plants and Bucky's and Chick-fil-A and all the good stuff, right? He created everything, and he wants to have a relationship with you. And you think about it, and you're like, I get to talk, I get to talk to God that created everything. Because like, think about it, if you tried to go to like the White House, or you tried to go to Elon Musk's house, or like any famous person, imagine if you just tried to go to Brad Pitt's house, and he's like tried to walk up to his house, open his door, go into his bedroom, and be like, hey bro, can I just tell you about my day? I just, I'm going through a lot. Can I just talk to you for a second and tell you what I'm going through? And then can you give me some advice and just encourage me? Like, there is no way that is happening, right? First off, they have, like, security, like, like, codes and, like, security guards probably. There's no way that you can just walk up to that kind of person and ask them to talk to you and spend time with you because they don't want to spend time with you, right? They probably think they have more important things to do. But I love the opposite of that is that we have God who created everything. And he's like, I want to have a personal relationship with you. There's no security gate around God. There's no magic code you have to put in to get into his house. There's nothing special you have to do to talk to God except talk to him. Because he wants to talk to you. And so God is never too busy to talk to you. He's never doing something more important to talk to you. He always has time for you. And that's why we don't have to pray. Like We get to talk to God. And I love that in Philippians chapter 4 it says this. This is crazy. Don't worry about anything. That is crazy just to say that. Don't worry about anything, but instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts 
and it will guard your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I love this verse because it's telling us we don't need to worry about anything. And I know there's so many things in your life that you can think about right now that are probably stressing you out, that are giving you anxiety. But we have the Word of God reminding us and encouraging us to say, don't worry about anything, just pray about everything. What are you stressed out about tomorrow? What if instead of stressing out about it, what if you just started talking to God, having a conversation with God about that? Because look what it says. Tell God what you need. God, I need some strength. God, I'm stressing out. God, I don't know this big decision. These people are being mean to me at school. I don't know how to handle it. God, please give me patience with my little brother, my little sister. There's all these things that we go through in our life. We can tell God what we need, and we thank him for all he's done. And then what? We'll experience God's peace. And it says his peace will exceed anything we can understand. It literally says his peace is better than you can even imagine. His peace is better than we can imagine. And it will guard your heart. And it will guard your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. And so tonight, one challenging thing I want to say to you is, maybe you're sitting here and you're like, man, he gets it. Like, I'm going through a lot of stuff. I got to get my grades right. I got to, my parents are mad at me because I'm not doing my chores. All these people are upset at me in school. I'm getting bullied on Instagram. There's all this stuff. Like, there's no peace in my life. And I just want to say, if there's no peace in your life, I look at this verse and I say, if there's no peace in your life, probably because there's no prayer in your life. Because I see this prayer and it says, don't worry about anything. And so if you're worrying about something, why aren't you praying about it? Because he's saying, if you pray about it, tell him what you need and thank him for what he's done and you will experience God's peace. And so if you don't have a lot of peace in your life, you probably don't have any prayer in your life either. And I love that Jesus sets the example once again. He's always praying. He's praying late at night. He's praying early in the morning. He's always finding time to pray. And I promise you that if you make time to pray and just talk with God, just have a conversation with God, I promise you will not leave praying to God. You will not leave more stressed. You will not have more anxiety after you pray. You will be filled with the peace of God. But I think some of us don't want to pray because it's like we see it as something that we have to do. But I want you to see it as something that we get to do. It's like, do you see prayer as a privilege or as a pain? Like, do you see prayer as a privilege or a pain? You're like, oh, it's Wednesday night. I have to pray again. Like, oh, we're going to sing some songs. Oh, i got to pray to God. Like, what should I say? I'll just say what I said last week. No, like, we get to talk to God. We get to have the peace of God as we talk to him because it's a privilege to pray. And we get to know God. How many of you know the best way to get to know someone is to talk to them? Like, I had a lot of friends in high school that I saw every day, like, between classes, walking in the hallways. You talk to them all the time. So I was really good friends with them. And then one day you graduate, and everyone, like, moves off or gets jobs, and you don't see everyone every day. And then I realized, like, a year later, I'm like, man, I'm not really, like, friends with these people anymore. It's like, oh, it's because I haven't talked to them in so long. So there's so much about them that I don't know anymore because we don't spend time together. We don't talk with each other. And so God, we get to know God through prayer. We get to talk to him. We get to know him and spend time with him because prayer is a privilege. So that's number one, the first thing prayer is. And the second thing that prayer is, prayer is powerful. Prayer is powerful. There is something amazing that happens whenever we pray to God, whenever we choose to say, God, I need help. I need help, and I know you are the helper. God, I need peace, and I know you are the prince of peace. God, I need grace, and I know that you showed me grace on the cross. And I love that prayer is amazing because there's something amazing about prayer that helps us put everything back in the right order of our life. Like I know we're all really good at like putting random weird things at number one in our life for some reason, and then we wonder why we're stressed out, we wonder why we're in a bad mood all the time. And it's like, because the thing that you're putting first in your life doesn't care about you and is burning you out. And prayer is that time when we get to say, God, this week was really hard, but I just want you to be number one in my life again. God, will you help me? Will you help me keep me, help keep me focused on who you are? It reorders the loves of our heart. It's us saying, you are God, and I'm not. 
I need help, and I know that you can help me, and I know that you want to help me. And praying is kind of like, like we all have like iPhones, right? If you have Android, I'm sorry, we will pray for you after the service. <laughs> but iPhone 15, incredible. But hey, praying is kind of like having an iPhone. It's like, you know, iPhone, you need like a charging cable, right? You need the charging cable, USB-C or Lightning or whatever it is these days. Like imagine having the newest iPhone 13 Pro, Double, XR, Max, Triple, whatever it is. There's so many letters. Imagine having the newest iPhone, but you don't have a charging cable. That's like, I know that just probably stressed all of you out right now when you just pray about that stress that just entered the room. But imagine having a phone, but no charging cable. And some of you going through life, like you wondered why you feel drained, you feel exhausted, you feel stressed out. And I'm like, that's because you're not connected to any power source. But how many of you know, even if you have a phone and you have a charging cable, and you can put the phone so close to the charging cable. But even if, if it's so close and it's not connected, then it doesn't charge your phone. Like you can get that thing as close as you want. As long as it's not connected, you're not getting any power into that thing. And it's like, you can go through your life. You're like going through your life with a phone with no power, power cable. Like eventually you're just gonna use that thing to like hold down papers or like hold something else up because it's gonna be useless. But once you have that thing connected to the power, you can use it to do so much. And I wanna encourage you, praise youth. If you don't feel like you have any peace in your life, well, what are you praying? Are you connected to God? Are you trying to get power from Instagram and fame and school and what your friends think and all those things that aren't actually a good power source? And I love this because we all know that you have a phone. Like I drive around, I plug my, my phone, I have an iPhone 10 guys, okay? Struggle bus, wow. So the battery is crazy low all the time. It's like anywhere I drive throughout the day, I'm driving around like four or five times a day, I have to plug that sucker in all the time when I'm driving, just to like keep it at a normal rate, like a normal percentage of battery. How many of you know, when you have a phone, you plug it in at least once a day? Because you know that it needs to have charge. But how many of you know, in the same way, like just coming to praise youth once a week and pretending to be here for Jesus, but actually you're just, being, you're just here for a boy or a girl, or you're just here to see how much trouble you can be in, like that's not how you get charged up. That's like being really close to the charging cable, but it's not connected. And then you wonder why your phone isn't charging. Because it's not connected. I just want us, praise you, I want you to see prayer as a privilege. That we get to know God. And prayer is powerful. And in the same way, I pray that, I hope that every time you plug your phone in at night, you're like, man, I'm plugging my phone in. Am I plugging myself into God? Am I connecting to God in this moment? Because I know prayer is powerful. Like, what if you went home tonight, as you plug your phone in, you go to sleep. You're like, God, I'm plugging my phone in. I want to plug into you. I'm connecting my phone to power. I want to connect myself to you. God, here's what I'm going through. I'm stressed out about this. I'm worried about this. I feel this way. God, can you help me? Because I know that you love me. I know that you proved your love on the cross. And I know that you can help me. Like, what if we connected? to God, the way that we connect our phones to power. I love in 1 Peter chapter 5, it says, cast all your anxiety on him. Cast all your anxiety on Jesus because he cares for you. And I know it's, it's 2022 now, right? It's like new year, new me, ah, all over again. But I know a lot of you in this room are thinking it's a new year but the same problems like just because there's a 22 at the end of the year doesn't mean your problems go away and you might be sitting here thinking it's a new year but I got the same problems I got the same people at school that make fun of me I got the same people that I hope they like so I'll do whatever they say to impress them I got the same parents that I'm trying to trying to obey but I really don't want to do what they say so I'm like I'm going against what they say I'm rebelling I have all these issues in my life what if in this moment, 
crazy youth, what if we started to connect ourselves to God? What if we started to say, God, I know you want to have a relationship with me. I want to have a relationship with you. I know that prayer is a privilege. God, thank you so much for saving me. God, thank you that I get to talk to you. And in those moments, all your fears, all your doubts, your shame, your guilt, everything that you're feeling, shame is so powerful that as you pray to God and you just talk about that, I believe that as you tell God about your shame and the guilt and how you're feeling, I believe that as you tell God that, He will replace that with grace. And He'll show you mercy. He'll encourage you. He'll remind you of His love, what He's done for you, how there's nothing that could stop Him from saving you. So if you don't have peace in your life, it's probably because you don't have any prayer in your life. And if you've, if you've already started 2022, and you're like, man, I'm like a week into this year, and I already feel drained. I'm already feeling on empty. What are you connecting yourself to? I just want you to connect to Jesus, the one that wants to have a relationship with you. He has all the power, and he proved he has all the power, not only when he created the world, not only when he created you, but whenever he chose to get on a cross, and he chose to die for you. And he proved it again when three days later when he came back to life. And he beat death, hell, and the grave for you. All the sins that you've committed, everything bad that you've done, all the mistakes you've made, all the people you've hurt. Jesus said, it's all good because I paid the price that you couldn't. And so now because of that, because of Jesus, we say, God, I will do whatever you ask. I will go wherever you send me. I will pray to you. I will live however you want me to live because I'm so grateful for what you've done. And so, praise youth, can we stand to our feet quietly, please, without talking to our neighbors? Because I want us to think about this without talking to your neighbors, praise youth. I want us to think about the fact that prayer is a privilege and prayer is powerful. Like, we get to pray to God. We get to talk to the creator of the universe. We get to be loved by God. And in a few moments, we get to sing songs to Jesus. We get to say, God, I see who you are, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the creator of me. And God, I've, I see what you've done. God, you died on the cross for me. When I was running away from you, when I was your enemy, when I was doing everything I could to be mean to you and to go against you, God, you still loved me. God, you still died for me. And that's why we sing songs. That's why we say prayer is a privilege, because that same God is the God that wants to have a relationship with us. And so praise youth, if there's anyone in this room, can you just bow your heads and close your eyes really quick? I think there are some people in this room that are thinking, you know, it's a new year, but I still have the same problems. It's a new year, but I still have the same shame and the same guilt and anxiety and depression as last year. And I thought a new year would just magically wipe it away, but that didn't happen. And I want to ask if there's anyone in this room that would say, God, I'm so grateful for what you've done. God, I understand that you saw me at my worst. When I was at my worst, God, you were at your best dying on the cross for me. And if there's anyone in this room that says, God, I, it's a privilege to know you, to be able to talk to you and pray to you and have a relationship with you. If there's anyone in this room that would say, I want that Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I want to live like him. I want to follow him. And I want to love him and have a relationship with him. Would you raise your hands? One, two, three. If you want to have a relationship with Jesus, and you've never done this before. Amen. Come on, people are raising their hands to have a relationship with Jesus tonight. Amen. Well, look, before we start talking to our friends, look, that, if you raise your hand, that is the best decision you can ever make. And I hope tonight that you'll realize that prayer is a privilege and prayer is powerful and having a relationship with God is a privilege. And now we have the privilege, we get to sing songs to this Jesus. It's just a way of us saying, God, 
you are so good. I'm going to raise my hands because you are God and I'm not. And I'm okay with singing songs that say how good you are. And so in just a moment, I'm going to pray and we're going to stay in our seats. I don't want you talking to your neighbors. Boys over here, I don't want you talking to your neighbors. We're going to focus. And maybe while you're singing, maybe even pray the lyrics to these songs. Maybe you just sing them or maybe you pray them. Just use this time where we can just talk to God. We just say, God, I'm so thankful for what you've done. God, thank you that you know me. You want to know me and you love me. So God, we are so thankful. God, that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for us. You came to show us the best way to live. God, would you help us to learn to pray, to connect with you, and to spend time with you. God, I pray in these next few moments that you would speak to us, that we would have a two-way conversation with you about what it looks like to live with you as our Lord and Savior and to follow you in everything that we do. Let's worship.